कॉन्सेप्ट नंबर नाइन प्राइसिंग एंड वैल्यूएशन ऑफ स्वैप कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अ स्वैप इज एन एग्रीमेंट टू एक्सचेंज अ सीरीज ऑफ कैश फ्लोज राइट वन पार्टी इज पेइंग फिक्स्ड एंड द अदर पार्टी इज पेइंग फ्लोटिंग राइट दिस इज व्हाट हैपेंस इन केस ऑफ एन इंटरेस्ट रेट स्वैप प्राइस ऑफ अ स्वैप द फिक्स रेट दैट इज डिटरमाइन इज द इज कॉल्ड द प्राइस ऑफ द स्वैप and it is calculated in such a way that the value of swap at initiation becomes zero so the value of the swap at initiation will be zero because the price is determined in such a way and later the value of swap will fluctuate with the change in interest rates okay as the fluctuating as the floating rate changes the value of swap will also fluctuate if interest rates increase after swap initiation then the one who is paying floating rate will lose okay because he will have to pay more and the one who decided to pay fixed will be in a beneficial position because in case because when interest rates are rising in the market he is obliged to pay a lesser amount so he will be winning in that case and vice versa if the interest rates are decreasing then the one who pays floating interest rate will be benefited as he will be paying lesser interest than the fixed interest rate to understand this let us take an example here let us say there is a company a and then company b company a decides to pay a fixed rate of interest that is 5% to company b the contract is done for a period of 1 year and against this the company b decides to pay company a a floating interest rate of libor plus 1% okay so whatever be the libor he will be adding a margin which is also called spread of 1% and will be paying the interest to company a for the entire year and for the purpose of calculation of interest we will be taking a notional principle and let's say the notional principle be 1 million dollar in this case now what do you think that uh, company b would agree for an interest rate of libor plus 1% because it is of the view that the libor at the end of the contract is going to be around 4% but at the end of the year let's say the libor turns out to be more than 4% let's say 4.75% in that case a will be winning here because he is required to pay only 5% whereas b will be required to pay 4.75 plus 1% margin that is total 5.75% so b will be at a disadvantage in this case so the final payoff that b needs to make to a that will be 0.75% of 1 million that will be equal to $7500 right so this is the final payoff that b will make to a after at the end at the expiry of this contract there is no actual transfer of this 1 million okay so that does not come into the picture and also a will not make any payment to b for this 5% this 50000 will never be transferred to b only the net payoff will be made at the end of this contract okay that is 7500 let's see this question here for further clarity and this is what you need to do for your exam notional principal of 5 million dollars fixed rate is given as 5% which is the swap rate floating rate is given as 90 day libor plus 0.5% in the previous example it was a one year libor now in this case it is a 90 day libor this means that the interest payments are will be made quarterly okay this is our periodicity of interest and uh, if you take a look at the libor for all these time frames today it is uh, currently it is at 3% after 90 days from that is 90 days from now it will be 3.5% and so on and we are required to calculate the payoffs after 90 days 270 days and 360 days so in the first case what will be the payoff uh, let me tell you that the payoff is determined as fixed rate minus the floating rate and whatever is the differential that is multiplied with the notional principal okay so this is the formula for the payoff so in case of 90 days now you need to understand this that if uh, let's say this is an entire year of 360 day period 
and we are talking about a 90 day period right now right so what is up what will be the payoff after 90 days so what payoff should be made on this day is actually determined on the basis of a 90 day LIBOR on this date okay whatever is the 90 day LIBOR on this particular day will be applicable for this period throughout okay so this interest rate is applicable for this period and will be made to pay on this day okay which means that this three percent which is a 90 day LIBOR today will be applicable for this period and not 3.5 percent okay so this is the most crucial point when you are doing calculations with LIBOR and this is what you need to be careful about. So now we can compute it that uh, it will be fixed rate. The fixed rate is 5% minus the floating rate. The floating rate in this case is 3% right and it is LIBOR plus 0.5%. So we have a spread here 0.005.5%. Okay, so this is the differential rate and since it is a 90 day LIBOR, we have to multiply this with 90 by 360. Okay, why we have done this because LIBOR rates are annualized rates. Okay, and we are making a quarterly interest payment. So it has to be multiplied with 90 by 360 and now we will multiply it with with the notional principal amount that is 5 million. And solving this, we get an uh, a payoff of one eight seven five zero dollars. We are uh, calculating it from the perspective of the fixed rate pair. This is what needs to be paid by the fixed rate pair, okay? Because the fixed rate is high and the floating rate is uh, low, so ultimately he will have to make a payment, okay? In the second case, let us compute again the fixed rate minus the floating rate. This time, what should be the LIBOR? This time, we are uh, looking at 270 day period. So, if this is the 270 day period, then we need to take a look at the LIBOR which was applicable just 90 days before that. Okay, so 90 days before that means on the 180th day, what was the LIBOR that day? And the answer is 4.5% okay do not confuse this with a 270 day LIBOR okay if you are making a payment on the 270th day then the LIBOR then the 90 day LIBOR that will be applicable is the LIBOR which was there on 180 day period okay so it is 0 0.045 plus the spread multiplied with 90 by 360 because LIBOR is an annualized rate and then multiplied with the notional principle and this gives us a value of what is the value this is also five percent this is also five percent right so the net payoff is zero in the third case five percent minus the floating rate this time the value is to be determined on 360th day that means the 90 day LIBOR after 270 days will be applicable that is 5% in this case right so this 5% will be applicable for these 90 days so 5% plus the spread times 90 by 360 into 5 million And this gives a negative figure of 6250. So this means that the fixed rate pair is in an advantage this case and he will receive this amount. Okay, this time he will be receiving and not paying. Alright, done. Then we have a note here, a swap is a series of off-market FRS. This is a very important point and can become a question in any form okay so let us try to understand this so let's say this is a three month period and uh, we enter into a three month period swap contract okay so 
what we essentially do in case of a swap contract is that for this entire period we pay a fixed interest rate and we receive a floating interest rate right and in the previous example this was five percent and this was LIBOR plus one percent right now how can this swap be replicated with the help of an FRA can can we do an FRA let's say for this first month period can we do an FRA for this period by entering into a forward contract and the rate for this forward contract be 5% similarly for the next period also we enter into an FRA for 5% and similarly for the third period as well if we cumulatively consider the payoffs for each of these FRA contracts then that will be equal to the final payoff for this swap contract this is the meaning that a swap is a series of FRAs but the key point to be noted here is that these are called off market FRAs now why off market because while uh, discussing FRA we have uh, read that the price of an FRA that is a fixed rate for an FRA is determined in such a way that the value of FRA becomes zero at the initiation right and on the basis of that the fixed rate for FRA is determined but in this case we have kept our uh, FRA fixed rate constant in each of these periods irrespective of the prevailing market conditions now because of that the value of FRA as on these date will not become zero okay there will be some positive or negative value on that particular date and since this is not uh, fitting into the uh, definition this is called off market because if you go to the OTC market then the pricing will determine keeping in mind that the value becomes zero at initiation but if you want to do something like replicating a swap with the help of FRAs in that case you will have to go off market and make the fixed interest rate constant in each of these case and that will lead to some positive or negative cash flows on each of these contract initiation dates okay so we will make the payment to him as on the initiation date to neutralize that effect and this is why it is called off market frs